Hello and welcome back to Antidepressing. This is the show where we talk about everything from liturgy to Lexapro. To Lexapro. It's a special summer episode, so summer. summer episode, which means that we're just gonna talk about cool things that are happening in the summer. Yeah. And, uh, and we're looking very summer camp chic We are today. looking very summer camp chic. I we're got looking very tired. My hat girl, Apple Watch, whatever. You'll Whoa. know why we're tired later um, because yeah, we'll, we'll explain we'll it. We'll deep dive. But please know that we're recording anyway because we're here for you guys. We have to give the people and what they want. And we could not miss this. Couldn't. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Jasmine, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I am so excited for later in this episode when we update you on what we've been doing for the past couple weeks of our lives. Uh, But in our world, my daughter wrote her name for the first time today. Very cute. See if I can find that. Very sad. Um, Very happy for her. Can't believe it. She was like, I wrote it without the dots because we'll like dots so she can do it. Isn't that so cute? She's also exceptionally self-critical and so she was like oh the e's are just not good enough yet i was like that's okay like they look really good and she was like mom to be honest they do not look very good (laughs) you know and yeah and noelle is like the queen of having an opinion and not letting you not know her opinion so yeah so i'm so happy for her big Um, respect to those ladies yeah. Who know their worth? Who know their opinions? That's true. What I'm are you lady doing? Lady. Um, so for me, um, I was doing a bunch of really cool things, actually. My life is full of adventure. Um, <laughs> I I actually did a uh, walking pilgrimage a couple weeks ago. So uh, I work for an organization that plans pilgrimages. We're planning Amazing. a National Eucharistic Pilgrimage next summer. Check it out at nationaleucharisticpilgrimage.org. Um, we did a test pilgrimage in Indiana like, two weeks ago, and mm-hmm. it was an 100-mile walking pilgrimage from Fort Wayne to South Bend. Amazing. I did not walk 100 miles, but I did walk 20 which That's a lot. was pretty intense. 12 miles one day, eight miles the other day. Oh it gosh. was like, wow. Her feet have not Have recovered not recovered. Yet. They are quite literally swollen as of this moment. Like swollen. swollen. <laughs> like I have a shin into a foot. I have a, sh- <laughs> I have a shoot. So it's like I am quite literally in pain every day. It's not even a cankle. It's, it's a shoot. It's so much worse. Yeah. So <laughs> – we did this pilgrimage, so it's great because the pilgrimage is um, – this was a test one. So it was yeah. 100 miles, and there were other uh, – we call them perpetual pilgrims, which is like a group of young adults that walked the whole 100 miles. Oh my and gosh. so they walk those 100 miles, and then they invite – or not invite, but anyone is invited to kind of join them in that walking every day. During that, Amazing. they have Eucharistic processions. They start with Mass. They have times of prayer, song, et cetera. It's beautiful. Yeah. So the two days that I was there, it was great. We started with mass. We did mass. (laughs) (laughs) Mass, mass, mass. We started with mass, mass, then we did mass. We started with mass, (laughs) and then we had a Eucharistic procession. Um, And it was amazing because so many people, like, joined um as we were walking so cool so yeah. how many miles was like that first little stretch in the morning so the first little stretch usually we do a one mile solemn procession with like the canopy and the whole thing so um, cool. which was really cool and then after that we do like a we walk the rest so the after that we did like the 11 miles and oh it gosh. was just straight walking and there's procession and then we'll have times of benediction where we'll have like a makeshift altar pop out table altar cloth mm-hmm. and then father does benediction then people like take a break, eat lunch, whatever, and then pick it, pick the monster and right back up again and keep on going. And it wow. is like, it was a lot, um, but it yeah, was such intense. a cool experience to see people just join in. Um, we walked past people's homes, people would kneel in their lo- front lawns and it was just like so cool. And so uh, that was the test pilgrimage that we did. And then right after that, I went and I worked at a Catholic camp for a little while, which we'll talk about a little later. So don't worry. It's happening. Um, and yeah, so other than that, I've just been like really doing well. I ordered some new sneakers. I ordered some new sandals. Um, just give me one second. Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to take this off. And we can do a poll. Maybe that can be our question at the bottom of the episode. If people think this shoe is cool. <laughs> if you're second. not watching the video and switch away, they can see the video. I can also put it on our Instagram. 
Chanel really debated what shoes to get because her feet were hurting so bad. They're cute, right? I feel like they're cute in like a you work at a summer camp way. If you didn't work at a summer camp, I don't know that they would be cute. You know what I mean? Not in like an offensive way. <laughs> so they are um, Tevas. Um, Is that how you say that? Yeah. Did you know that? No, we, because you and I have called them Tevas. Yeah, but my like little years. sister, Camille, started working for Teva. Oh, and she's they're called than Tevas. Us, she knows. Yeah. Dang. Isn't that crazy? So, Sorry, Teva. I've been really ruining your I know, brand. I've been calling y'all Tevas for so long. So they're called Tevas, and they are wow. Tevas Extra Comfort. So I'm really praying that like they follow through. So. That's For those amazing. of y'all that have that. Um, shoots like me, drop any recommendations for how that to develop is. an ankle again. Um, so that yeah. is like how I've been doing. Mom Before made... we pivot from oh, yeah. the pilgrimage, can yeah. you tell me like who like the most inspiring people you met were mm -hmm. or maybe some of the interactions you had along the way that are like mm -hmm. carrying with you? So, okay. Hmm. I would say some of the most inspiring people, while we were walking there, it was really cool because there was, we walked past his house and these people came out and prayed on their lawn and then they went back inside and then came back out and they had a little girl who changed into her first communion dress. She had just received first communion mm -hmm. and she walked for like four miles with us and it was so That's cool. So sweet. Yeah, it was so cool. And then while we were walking, my shoes are, were at the time were like not made for walking like that. So my <laughs> feet were kind of like given out on me. Um, and this man just drove by in like kind of like a cargo truck and he slowed down and he was like, Hey, are you guys with that group? Cause I was like two miles, uh, like, half a mile behind the group. Yeah. He was like, are you with that group? I can just drop you off in the front. And we just went in oh. the back of his cargo truck and his daughter was in there. You and to reset to yeah. the start. And he was just like, here. And he had a shirt that said, no, no Jesus, no peace. Like the oh. N K N O W. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he was just like, wow, this is really cool. I'm like so happy that you guys are doing this. He was like, I'm That's not Catholic, beautiful. but I'm praying for you. Like, I don't know what this is. Um, so then we got to evangelize, tell him about the Eucharist and talk to him about how we believe this is really Jesus. And he dropped us off at the front of the line. And it was just like such generosity from so many people. And That's so it was powerful. really cool. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it was really cool because people were like hoofing it for so many miles. Yeah. And watching everyone support each other was awesome. So like you would be tired and people would be like, you got it. Like so supportive That's and so, so sweet. like you got it don't worry like keep going and mm -hmm. um like you know sharing snacks and sharing sunscreen and it was just like really really cool That's so it made beautiful. me excited for next summer for the young adults for the national eucharistic pilgrimage they'll be walking for um two months so oh they'll be gosh. leaving four different points of the united states and then they'll be walking with the conclusion of their walk being in indianapolis for the eucharistic congress so They'll be walking for two months, 10 to 15 miles a day. So it oh, is going to be. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So it'll be four groups of 10 young adults and two priests. Um, and so I'm excited for them to hear yeah. about all the people that they'll encounter and meet and all the generosity they'll receive. Because in my two days, we were like made dinner. You know, people yeah. like got us water bottles. It was just That's like amazing. so nice, That's you know. That's really cool. Um, and so, yeah, I just I'm really, really, really excited about it. So. That's so beautiful. So that's me. Yeah. Such beautiful work. I love just that. Just changing the world. That's me. Nothing crazy. You know me. Nothing I don't crazy. do anything you know else me. but just like change society. That's it. And End of episode. Have throbbing feet. End of episode. I have shits. I feel like there should be, I feel like there's got to be a saint quote about how like your feet hurt all the time. Like these saints were always like walking around, helping people, climbing mountains, doing the things. There has like, to be. Like, they didn't complain about how their feet hurt? There has to be a saints. saint. There has to be a saint episode. Or <laughs> episode. There has to be, like, a saint quote about, like, Were the saints about, tired? Did their feet hurt? About shuts. The people need to know. Mm -hmm. Do you think I could trademark shuts? Is that an actual thing? Shuts? I think it sounds <laughs> too close to multiple other things you wouldn't want it to sound like. I got a bad case of the shuts. I feel like we both have a bad case of the shits and a bad case of like the the hunchback of Notre Dame situation. I think you're was this Steven talking to you yesterday and he was like uh, he was like uh, there's a, a bump, bump on the 
top of here and I was like your... it's just stress leave me alone and he was like you know how you talk to your spouse yeah um but for real so, where do you carry your tension Great I question. think that mine carries right here up in my up in my shoulders your little neck because I like to keep it real I like close, to keep it real, real tight close. I was talking to my sisters like, like a month ago and I was talking to them and I was like so anyway you guys like I think that we wait, should wait that's actually so true what, now that you do that yeah. Sometimes I'll just talk like this when I'm stressed. And my sister was like, drop your shoulders. And I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that I was doing it. But I hold a lot of stuff like right here. Oh, um, I feel like so, need to. Yeah. I'll so sometimes I'll remind myself to just like drop my right. shoulders, unclench my jaw and just like chill, you know, because sometimes chill. it's just like not that deep. It's so. not that deep. Mine's yeah. all right here. Oh, in your know. little in your little back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude. Upper shoulders. Yeah. I just think that people who do ministry work mm. should have like free massage therapy. Mm. And that's my hot take of the day. There's probably a grant for that. Should we start a nonprofit? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> like masseuses for ministry. I can't, I can't start any other We both ministries. already have a nonprofit. I cannot start We're like any speaking of things that stress us out. Yeah. Should we start a whole other organization mm. to help relieve our stress? Drop a comment and let us know if we should start another ministry. Um, I think that I think that we honestly should. And you know what I think? A youth minister I think that we should tension. tell your husband first about this idea and see what he says. Yeah, he would love it. <laughs> he would absolutely be like, Jasmine, if you do one more thing, like that's it. We're gonna move to an island, so you have no access to Wi-Fi. No, so that actually would be nice. So yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, so here for the hardest pivot in antidepressing history. We are jumping from a Eucharistic pilgrimage to talking about the one, the only, Pete Davidson. I like, this is such a dramatic pause because I don't even know where we're going. Like, I don't even know how to make this transition. Oh, yeah, transition. <laughs> We needed two songs we to make that two. shift. Okay, hit us and also it. I played that right in the middle of you talking. I'm so sorry. This is an unhinged podcast because it is the summer. It's an unhinged episode. Because We're different it is the in summer. the summer. We are different in the summer, and we are exceptionally tired. So, but we're here for you. So we're here for none you. of that matters. So in Anything our first and kind of only story today, because we really want to share a lot about what we're doing this summer um, and the yeah. ministry and how we met. So you guys can get to know but us a little bit more. Story but this story stuck out so much. It was too important to miss, honestly. So for this story, we're going to talk a little bit about Pete Davidson. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about PETA. And we're going to talk about animals. And we're going to talk about adoption and we're going to talk about all kinds of crazy stuff so pete davidson um bought a dog from a local steward um in new york and uh someone at PETA gave a story to tmz saying that he's irresponsible for buying a dog and he mm. should adopt a dog there's a big conversation around adoption versus purchase because of unethical breeding behaviors which is yep. legit mm -hmm. um and so Spread that rumor. Pete Davidson got really upset, left a... Yes, he does. Hilarious, but inappropriate <laughs> voicemail on the PETA member's phone. Um, and just kind of explained that, like, hey, he's allergic to many dogs, and he had to buy a specific type of dog, mm -hmm. which he could not just, like, go in and adopt because they breed that specific type of dog. Yeah. And that dog is also very important because it was his mother's dog who just passed away, who they, as a family were mourning, he bought the same kind of dog for the mm -hmm. family. Like keep the legacy Wanted going. Want to keep that yeah. legacy going. So I think we should talk about the joy and the, kind of the mental uplifting that pets give us. Yeah. Yeah, and like the nature of having kind of an extra four-legged family member yeah. yeah let me first say in regards to this pete davidson story that like this can't be the craziest thing that pete davidson is doing right now Yeah, absolutely like not. i get it that yeah. PETA, like this is what they do and they're worried about like animal rights and so in that regard i'm like yeah 
But as we were looking for stories, it was like Pete Davidson, like reckless driving, crashes into a Bel Air house. I'm like, when we really look at the scope of like what this guy's doing with his life, I really don't know that like buying a dog is the craziest thing he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. So I love that it became a story. But I'm like, I mean, he's a little unhinged as a person. He is a little bit. A little unhinged. And that voicemail. Funny and unhinged. Very Pete. If you know him. If you know him. As if we know him. We know him. Allegedly. You guys just don't know Pete like we know Pete? Allegedly. Allegedly. Don't tell me. So, yeah. So, Pete. Speaking of Lexapro. It's time for me to take my meds. That's my alarm, (laughs) you guys. So, it's time for me to take my medication. Well, we're really leaning into our tagline. Yeah, I know. But to your comment of pets and, like, the presence and the power they hold, Mm. I definitely think that there's so much truth to that and for me like growing up my childhood dog like really I think that like spending time with my dog helped me with so many of like the traumas I went through as a kid Mm. and like helped me to just like sit because when you're sitting with an animal you just kind of sit with them Mm. and I do think there's like so much power in the healing presence that a pet can give and especially the way that like when your pet dies you will immediately want to like fill that void because it's such a like lack of presence immediately and unlike when someone in your life dies where it's like oh I can't just like go out and replace them there is this idea with pets that like though you're not replacing it it's like I can direct this love into another pet Mm. and still continue to like feel like the legacy of my last pet can live on. on yep yeah absolutely and I mean, I do have a question for you of what was your, who was, what is your favorite pet? I think I know the answer thus far. I know you have a really good pet now, but oh, I think, man. I think you had a really good pet before. And I've had such good pets. So while you pray about that, I'm going to share about how much my pet influences me to just be a, a more patient person. Mm. I like pets, but not in the way that <laughs> other people do. Not I, in the way that I want to have one that I take care of. That's Chanel's vibe. I like my space to be particular, and I like my things to be particular, and I like my food to not be begged for. I just like don't. In, I get in your carpet to not be peed oops, on. That part, and I get frustrated when like dogs act like you don't feed them or mm, like cats just like, like meow at you all that like I just I get really like jarred because I'm like yeah. I'm taking care of you and it's just like a lot yeah. but my dog Cooper um who is the OG he's 12 he's so sweet he has like two teeth everything to us. he's so freaking sweet um you know he's teaching me to just be like a better more patient person and That's fair. and he really uplifts me because like I will be sad about something and Cooper will just come in my room and just like lay by me. They know. And they know. And like, know. you know, or I'll, when I get home, we call him Snoopy or Pooper because he like is a dog and can't tell the difference. So sometimes <laughs> we'll say like, hi, Pooper Snooper or Cooper Snooper or Poopy Scoop. And I'll walk and in the door and that. I'll say like, Poopy Scoopy Whoopy Whoop. And he'll just like flip to his side every time and just get his pets ready. Stringy. And it's just like, that makes my day. Cause, it's so sweet. Because he just like has the routine. He flips yep. to his side. He, get, he knows he's getting pets. That's a little pet. He gets, gets a little situated. pet. Gets situated. Goes back in his bed. Goes up his stairs he has. Gets back in his bed. His stairs to get up <laughs> on the couch because he can't jump. He's so cute. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, you know, having a pet really accelerates the compassion that you have and the patience that you have. It's like a good precursor for children and for some people it's just like a good anything good so if you mm-hmm. don't even have babies it's, it's just like, like a good into, way to just mm-hmm. pour into something else and just like learn to be less of a mean person so, it's so true and it's very yeah. self-sacrificial it know? is and j- yeah and just like even watching you guys you guys have like two kids and you'll still get up and be like, all right, Fran has to like go potty. She has to go eat. Mm-hmm. We got to like a full-time rub her. Job. We got to rub her. We got to bathe her. We got to shave her. We gotta- <laughs> <laughs> and Fran, their dog, is like an Australian Shepherd and is like a shed monster. So it's like. like so insane. <laughs> so it's like all of those things. And you guys still do that and have the capacity to be the patient with her. And then like, you know, but she knows her role because it's like as soon as we're eating dinner, 
Steven or Jasmine will be like, all right, Fran, you know what's up? It's time to go in your house. It's your little kennel because it's like, girl. Because she's crazy. You're crazy. So She'll it's just like. lay there and be like. crying yeah so she wants to eat our food yeah but i just love the way dogs and cats and other pets can just like bring you to a state of like calm because yeah you know if you treat them well which you should then all they do is just like love on you that's That's it like fran just lives to like lick y'all she lives to love and just like hang out and sometimes jasmine will be like fran if you could just give me two seconds without some love like please yeah you know it's just yeah (laughs) yeah honestly a consistent theme in my house is that like (laughs) you know how people will say like oh moms are really like touched out as she knows not just me but it's okay (laughs) um it's like everybody in my family wants to touch me 24 hours a day. And those are the facts. <laughs> like my kids want to just lay on me. My husband wants to hug me. My dog wants to lay right on top of me. And like if I tell any of them no, except for my husband because he like respects me, yeah. they're just like, oh, mom, like why? And my dog will literally lay on the ground next to me if I won't let her like on the couch on top of me and just cry. And just cry. <laughs> it's like and crazy Jasmine, being and, a mom. And Fran is a huge She's, dog. Yeah. But she'll act like a lap dog. And <laughs> and Jasmine will just be like, Fran, please. Like, she'll just, just go in. Like, minutes. if you can imagine a dog, like, sitting like a human being. Like, just sitting on, on a person. You. Like, Fran will just go. And there'll be a whole room. <laughs> and Fran will just go to Jasmine, her lap, mm-hmm. and just sit. Just sit right there. And, and she's like, like as just, big as me when she's sitting. It's she insane. Is. But you know, it's like all about patience and it's all about just like becoming a better person. And and the so joy true. that the puppies give us is just like beyond comparison. So it's so just true. wonderful. Oh, also I forgot something cool that I did last week. My Let's nephew or two weeks ago, circle back a little bit, because why not? Um, my nephew visited me for a week and it was awesome. He's four. I think we already talked about it. Nah, I don't remember. I don't Leave know what comment. time is anymore. Leave a comment if I already <laughs> talked about this. Anyway, my nephew visited me and oh, he tried and, and I'm, con- I'm connecting this. So for those of you that are like, what the? Bring it back. Connect it. He tried to pet Cooper, who oh, no, 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 no. hates children, so um, loves adults, but yeah. hates children. It's like they're a little too fast for him mm-hmm. um, in his old age. And so he tried to pet Cooper, and my mom and I were just talking in the living room. And then, you know, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like, we hear, like, <laughs> whatever. Wait, Which do it you- again. Do it where you really do, like, the deep growl. Oh, I can't. It's like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm not prepped. She's so good at impersonating <laughs> but it's like that dog. Cooper and uh, and then all of a sudden DJ is like ah, whatever, you know. So, but it's like so for me, Cooper teaches me how to be patient and be kind and be slow. Yeah. But for kids, Cooper probably just teaches them to be scared. So you know, it's just <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I think though, for my kids, Cooper does teach them that like sometimes you need to respect personal space. That's true. And that's good because like our dog. <laughs> They can just no. lay on her, climb on her. Like, no one or in we'll our family look over really sometimes has, like, spatial And Joy will just have her mouth open and Fran Frankie's will just looking be able to inside of it. In or, mouth. like, Frankie will be eating and Joy shoves her hand into Frankie's <laughs> mouth to see if she'll bite her. It's, like, a very toxic uh, little relationship. But you have a home where, like, you have raised your kids to be as affectionate as they are. They are. And your yeah. husband is affectionate. That's and, on us. And, and it's so on you. Are, and <laughs> Yeah. So are you. So honestly, it's and I saw I saw your kids today, and I was just like, "When am I getting the smoochie?" And, and they were like, "Now, right now." <laughs> and Joy was like, "Here we go." Gave me a smoochie on each cheek, and I was they like, "Girl, it. I missed you so much." So you know, so dogs, big pets, on animals, love them. Big on affection. They big on them. mental uplifting, etc. Yeah, and cheers to the dogs that just like know who they like and don't like. Because yeah. Coopy like cheers to Coop. loves me. He does. Does not love my children. Does not. Absolutely not. When Jasmine will walk in with her kids, he will absolutely be like. Mm. And it's like I betrayed him because mm-hmm. Coopy and I are like kind of dating. I feel mm-hmm. whenever um, <laughs> she comes over, he'll like lick her shins for a little bit. He'll like loves stroll me. over if Jasmine's like. Come on, Coop. He'll He's actually like, follow her. He does not follow any of us. He does not listen to any of our commands. He's my boy. Yeah, Jasmine literally said one time, she was like, come on, Coop, can you show me how you go up your stairs? And he like he did like, it. He had to show off. <laughs> yes, but so if I show like, up with my kids, it's like 
if your best friend brought your mortal enemy to a party, like yeah, that's the kind like of vibe. That. Like if Cooper's there was like, a girl that was always really mean to you and then your best friend brought her to a party, that's how it is. And Cooper has that look in his eyes. Like, you know, you, know, you see what's about to happen right now. Like heads are about to roll. Yeah. He's like, like heads you are did about this. to roll. And it's going to be your fault. Like because, because of how this, dare you? I'm going to piss in Chanel's room. Yeah. <laughs> like, you <laughs> know he is. And then you know, it takes him a I'm couple sad. more times of me coming back before he's like, we're good again. Yeah. Because how dare I? Honestly, how dare I? He's the king. He is. He rules this house. He has like five beds. So. I love them. So, wow. Yeah. So Pete Davidson, God bless him. Glad he got a new dog. A dog. But cheers to the people who are getting pets, that are helping their mental health, yep. that are, you know, just mm -hmm. really leaning into how pets can just they can change seriously your boost your mood. Yeah. Drop a comment. What's your pet's name? What's your pet's Do name? Do you have a lizard? Do you have an iguana? Do people and like, have those? Do how does it affect hamster? your mental health? How does having a pet How's affect, it affect your mental, mental health? health? Do you love does it make hamster? it worse? Does it make it better? Do you have a mouse? Don't mice and rats only live for like a month? I'm going to be honest. I, I so. can't yeah. understand. I can't understand people who would want a mouse or a rat as a pet. And if you're listening to this and you're like, I have a mouse or rat as a pet, I want to know like what the appeal is. Do they let you play with it? Are they kind of gross? I guess I don't know. So let us know. You're looking up the life expectancy of a rat. Yeah. Your Google searches are going to get crazy after you Google that. What is it? Five days? Let me see. This is the longest Google I've ever witnessed. Dude, when I tell you my Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. Wi-Fi struggle today. Mouse <laughs> lifespan. Whoa. Five to seven years? I thought it was like a month. A month? No. Wait, how long does a rat live? Wait. Rat. I mean... I feel like mice and rats aren't that different, right? Mm -mm. Rat is two years. Black rat, 12 months. No. Honestly, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know there what are they people would become. Out there. If you think that's 12 cute, months. I can respect it for you. Not for Let's me. See. We're about to take another pivot of a lifetime. If you're like, wow, this is really all over the place today. We feel that too, and that's just how we are emotionally. Mm. So I'm going to take you back to the summer of 2013, 10 years ago, because, ladies and gentlemen, this week, it is mine and Chanel's 10-year anniversary of our first conversation with each other. And it's so fun being her best friend because she'll just zone out Googling rat facts. <laughs> I'm trying to Google what domestic animal lives the shortest amount of time. Why do you want to know? I don't know. And I'm like, aren't you curious? No. <laughs> That's sad. I'm happy to be friends with you, too. I'll put down my phone. See? Friendship. Presence. A gift. Ten years ago, I had been working for a Catholic summer camp. Um, you can I say am. it. Alive in new camps. Allegedly. We're authorized. <laughs> So I've been working for Alive and You. Um, I'd been working for them for like a year. And the first year was not. 2013 was your first year. That's when we had our first conversation 10 years ago. And Chanel was having a particularly it hard summer. It was particularly challenging. It was not super mm -hmm. fun on staff. Um, you know, just kind of Yikes. learning. <laughs> All those who were there in 2013. <laughs> just not. It, 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 was a, it was a me thing, right? So just kind of like learning. You're responsible for things. You kind of have to. New jobs are hard the first year. New jobs are hard. It's like I was learning how to like, you know, you have notions of it being like fun and like you're karaoke every night and partying and hanging out and then also talking about Jesus and also like dancing and having fun. But, but it was like a lot. unloading a truck, loading a truck. Yeah. yeah, it was like it's a, a lot, lot of happy. working. So I met Jasmine. We had a little convo. Mm -hmm. Jasmine, uh, do you remember what that convo was I about? do. You probably blocked it out. You were very tired by yeah. that point. This was like, Retweet. I don't even know, not your first week. Mm. And we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Also the place I met my husband, all the people I love. Um, and Chanel was on staff and I was had applied for staff that summer and did not get hired. And I will never forgive them. Um, and I was like staying up late, helping them clean up stuff, trying to like, you know, really hype myself up so they would consider me again. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I don't really know if I would ever reapply because like, is it like a, I apply, they're never going to hire me, whatever thing. I didn't really know what the vibe was, but I was talking to Chanel and she was so nice and like very cool and down to earth. And 
I distinctly remember my first real, real memory of you. There was a giant, like giant spider Mm -hmm. on one of the speakers. So huge. And Chanel freaked out. And I just took off my shoe and killed the spider Mm -hmm. in front of her. And then she was like, what is your name? (laughs) <laughs> like Jasmine and she was like that was amazing <laughs> wow and then she was like what is your vibe and I told her I had applied for staff didn't get it and she was like I applied for staff last year didn't get it got hired the next year so she was like so you should really apply because I would really love to have like a friend on staff <laughs> which is really sad now that I know her and I know that was kind of a hard year but I did And I reapplied, and then in the summer of 2014, we started the journey that would become our journey to best friendship. And now, like, nine years later, we are just still working at camp. I do not work to the capacity that I did before as, like, a full-time summer summer camp member. Um, Mm -hmm. I am almost 30, so I am – my knees are popping – but I do have the That's privilege of working with them for like two weeks, um, which is really Amazing. fun. Yeah. And so this is a traveling Catholic summer camp. They do service work in different cities. Mm-hmm. It's for high schoolers. It's really fun. Um, Jasmine actually works in a much larger capacity than being yeah. a summer staff member. Why don't you go ahead and tell them what's up? I'll tell them a little bit. Yeah. So it has been... Like, my life goal and mission since I got hired for Alive New when I was 19. I was like, I just want this to be my job. I just want this to be my job all the time. And as of last year, it became my job all the time. Like, such a gift. Uh, and I work from home for Alive New, prepping stuff for camps. And then I run our nonprofit branch. And it's amazing. And it's a lot of, you know, behind-the-scenes work. I'm behind-the-scenes queen. Uh, lots of prepping content, which is awesome because I can use my theology degree and do all that stuff. This summer, it's been like, you know, giving talks, finding places for people to shower, uh, you know, managing staff, doing it. It's a lot. It's a range of things. Uh, I'm very glad I have a counseling degree. Mm. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of kids crying. A lot of turmoil. It's a lot of, it's a lot of youth ministers. Yeah. But you know what? Jesus is, a, Jesus is working. Jesus the Holy is Spirit doing it is up right this there. Summer. G- the Holy Spirit's in the mix. Yeah. So yeah. So we met. Tell 10, me about your first impressions of me. Ten years. ago. Twenty fourteen. We're uh, both on staff. Okay. Twenty fourteen. We're both on staff. I think that you're really fun. Thank you. So I much. thought that you were really like nice because you were like yeah let's just walk together and i loved that you were like let's walk together let's go you eating lunch like let's eat lunch together and Mm -hmm. i was like this is nice like you're being very kind (laughs) and you were just really like sure like were you dating steven then yeah yeah okay yeah because i remember you were like steven and i are gonna like try to like get some ice cream or something or hang out like after we did all our work for camp for the day um, but you'd be like, yeah, but I'm going to come and like, you want to sleep next to me? And I was like, yes. Yeah. And it was just so fun. <laughs> and I remember you being like so intentional about mm-hmm. being like, you can sleep next to me. We can eat lunch together, even though you had a boyfriend and like, you know, we're like trying to do this job. It was like a lot to balance. And even now, like, I think it translates. Cause even now you have like, uh, uh, like so many things like her kids are at camp as we're speaking mm-hmm. and like but you're still be like do you want to like you'll make time for people in things you have to do so you'll be like i'm going to walgreens do you want to come or like i'm walking to this thing do you want to walk mm-hmm, with me mm-hmm. like you'll make time so i remember being like wow she's really nice like you're making time for oh, me in the mix. It's more sentimental than I thought it was going to be. It's all good. I love this. You're like, you're making time for me in the mix of things when you're like, have a lot of stuff to do. And wow, Jasmine's you. job, you guys, is like, so she is like the camp director. So like making yes. sure that camp exists on a large scale. So like mm-hmm. making sure that kids have bathrooms, there's classrooms, there's keys, making sure youth ministers aren't like losing people. It's like a big job. Mm-hmm. And she also has a four-year old and a two-year-old that are super <laughs> dynamic um and Very a, a dynamic. husband that's super involved and dynamic but also is the full-time band leader for the whole summer yes. so it's like a full-time like working operation between like kids that want to play in the playground at the back of the school mm-hmm. 
and then also having to make phone calls to like make sure that youth ministers know what's going on. Jasmine, I don't know how she does it. So I have you. That's she'll how I downplay do it. a lot of being Next like, week. oh, like I, you know, I like have been working for them. I'm so happy I kind of work on content. And it's like <laughs> she like <laughs> that was a light way to describe it. It was That's a light fair. way. Yeah, she does a lot. So yeah, so I just remember being like, wow, she does a lot, and somehow you're still managed. I've never heard someone say like, I feel like Jasmine doesn't make time for me because you make time for so many people. Wow, I try so, so hard, and so many people in your life. Thank you. And Jasmine has so many friends, and not just in a way that's like a flippant. Oh, I have so many friends, but like she has a lot of people in her life that are, like will call her or answer when she calls and be like happy to hear from her because she's intentional. You wow, call people and you. they know who you are. It's and turned into a major hype up, but yeah. I think you knew I needed it. Thank you're, you so much. You know, you're a great person. So it's like, sometimes I'm like, how how did I even get here? I don't know. Because wow. I, we joke all the time about how I used to be like, I just, I'm just going to keep following you. And Jasmine would be like, <laughs> okay. Literally, uh, my favorite thing about meeting Chanel as like friends in 2014 was that Chanel's just the queen of inserting herself mm -hmm. in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're going to go? Let's do it. Yeah, let's, do <laughs> let's it. go. It was the first time in my life I had ever had someone where I was like, oh, hey, Stephen and I are going to go, like, eat. And she was like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Oh, like, and then <laughs> like, I don't know if we meant like with you, but honestly, I was like, I liked you so much and wanted to be your friend so much. And Stephen and I just started dating like three months before, <laughs> and I still was like, hey, babe, she's Can't just coming with and us. And so Stephen would be like, <laughs> okay, all right. Because he was only like, just sometimes, so happy to be hanging out with only me. Only sometimes you'd be like, all right, well, Stephen and I are gonna, like, I'm because you were sacristan, you were like, yes. all right, we're gonna like folds and uh, like purificators and we got to like talk and we we're just going to spend some time and I'd be like all right uh, but most times I'd be like, be like hey yeah I'd be like yes. hey Steven and Steven was like all right well, you started yeah good. you started to like find a balance but I will <laughs> say like the pinnacle of our friendship is communication mm. I think we're like that's something we just have always we try worked really hard at and it's really hard because it's not common to have a friend that you can be open and honest with like mm. and right away it was like I just knew that this was going to be a special friendship mm -hmm. so I was like I have to be honest with her and so when there were times where I was like okay we need a little space I'll like, be honest right. and sometimes you'd be like mm -hmm. yeah but then you'd be like okay I that I understand I totally understand can we also schedule time yeah. and then we and would then like create like, a little schedule because right. then it's Jasmine like Jasmine said in her house people are constantly touching her and like yeah. hugging on her or whatever and also just in her life people are constantly <laughs> like i feel like we need to schedule time jasmine jasmine what are you doing jasmine what are you and so if you're so around true. jasmine for like a day she'll be like oh wow so how are you doing and then she'll be like oh yeah just give me one second hi okay give me okay all right well how are you doing and then she'll be like oh give me one second i just got an email all right, so no, okay, yeah, I'm super. <laughs> she'll be like, I'm right here, like I'm listening, I'm 100, percent I'm right here. Oh, it's so and then hard. her daughters will be like, Mommy, like, what are you? And she's like, Oh, I love you so much, baby. Like, okay, I love you so much, <laughs> Mommy. Just needs like five. Okay, you want to run down the hallway? Let's do it. Like answering emails as she's sprinting down the hallway, playing with her. This kids. is literally just motherhood, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a bliss. combo. It's a grind. It's bliss. Yeah. Tell me this, Chanel. We've been working for Alive and You for you ten years, me nine. What keeps you coming back? Man, oh, what is it with question. the toxic obsession? I don't know. Yeah, it is very toxic. <laughs> I think that what keeps me coming back, one of the major things is, you know, the people that started Alive in You have become some of my dear friends. Mm -hmm. And I just like love, I love them. And I love their kids. Yeah, and I absolutely. love being in community with them. And I think that they make me better. And I love like, I just... Yeah, I love Jim. I love like laughing with him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I love, yeah, I just love them. And it's like yeah. when you believe in people, it makes it not hard to be like, I believe in this mission. And then like when you know how camp mm -hmm. runs, it's like, oh, of course, I want to be a part of something that's helping kids like know who Jesus is in a way that's not lame. Yeah. You know, so then whenever I have times where I'm like, oh, this summer I don't think I can do camp or whatever, I, 
I will try to go out of my way to be like, all right, if I can do like a week, I'll help with that. Or if I can do two weeks, because it's just or at least like where, if I can visit for a couple yeah, of if days, I can visit, like yeah. I would love to, because it's like you just want to be in the mix of something that's so good that it's like otherwise during the year, it's like, you know, I don't really encounter people like that yeah you know in that way that's so true and just like you're just constantly like working or you know so it's it's really great how about you yeah I think definitely the community has a lot to do it yeah. with it um and I especially love like now that we've been in this role of like managing a staff being able to like form mm. these like college students younger people and like seeing us in them mm. and kind of being able to like pour into them in that way I think is really powerful but I also I remember at the end of camps last year We always give our youth ministers like a picture at the end of the week that was their group picture from the first day that they got there. And when I handed them out, I was like talking to the youth ministers in front of the whole group and like thanking them for everything they did. And then I talked about how like when these teens go home and I was talking to them saying like when you come home, you are probably going to feel different Mm. and I encourage the youth ministers to like look at those group pictures Mm. and like see the difference in their kids eyes from that first day when they show up on Tuesday to Sunday when they're going home and like genuinely like seeing this like heart change in teens is Mm. so powerful every time and I said it last year I was like the craziest thing is like Every year I hit a point in camp where I'm like, what are we doing? Like me and my husband are working full time. (laughs) We have our kids with us. We're like sleeping on an air mattress. We're exhausted. And I hit a point that I'm like, what? How is this like worth it? Like what is the fruit in this? And then every time we get to an end of a week and I see those teens faces and I can see like, the little change from them being like nervous in session the first night to like more comfortable towards the end to like so into it Mm. by the last day. And like our last night of adoration is just so powerful. And it just like keeps me sucked back in every Every single year. And you watch like the closing video where like Mm -hmm. they'll show the whole week and you see like the reactions of the kids. And and it's just like one of those things where you're like, Mm -hmm. man, you know, this isn't a horrible way to spend a week of my summer because these kids are just so like ready to receive what God Mm -hmm. has prepared for them. And then the staff is so ready to pour out into them. And then you're so ready to pour out into the staff that it's like such a labor of love to be like, you know what? I'm just like gonna, and then you have such a cool team that it's like you have Jim and his children and then the other staff members and you and Steven and the band. And Mm -hmm. it's like, Everybody is just trying. And yeah. that level of like, these are adults who could be doing anything else. And I am honored to be a part of it. So yeah. it's like every year I'm shocked that like Jim even is like, oh, yeah, you can come back. I know. It's like, because it's like, you yeah. know, these are like, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just so great. Yeah. So. It's the familial aspect too. Like Jim and Heather. Obviously, like, hired us when we were really young. Mm -hmm. And when we started, like, their kids were were the age of, like, what my kids are now. And Mm. now they are the age that I was. And so it's really Mm. cool to now see them, like, with my kids. And it's just become such, like, a family thing. And, like, our babies are just, like, camp babies. And they live for coming back to camp all year. And, like, Mm. so excited. Um, And then also, like, for... Me, at least, when I came on my first Alive in You when I was 17, that was my first, like, real, genuine, like, heart conversion experience. Mm. Um, And my first, like, deep connection with Jesus where I actually felt like an authentic relationship. And so having the opportunity to provide that Mm. for teens and provide a place where they can serve a community and learn more about their faith while being surrounded by like people who are uplifting them Mm. it's just like such a gift it is it is alive in you a gift our faith a gift a gift it's all our friendship a a gift gift. all fully gifts today life is a gift our exhaustion a gift. Uh, a gift a gift a (laughs) gift in perspective i guess yeah now that we actually said all of this don't you feel a little more awake yeah. I feel like I perked up a little now that I listed all the reasons we like doing this. Hmm. Maybe we should do this every week. 
<laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe, like, we why should, we, maybe we should do an episode with a staff member like next Oh my gosh, week one a week and be like, like how, how many hours did you sleep last Maybe like week three. We can do an episode with a staff member. They'll be like, just be like, just check so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fine. I'm just almost dead. Except for some of our staff members are like, I could do this all day. I love it. I love it. I live for it. And it's inspiring. Yeah, it is. It is. Cheers to them. They Cheers. keep us going. So you guys like this is our, you know, summer episode. We're feeling pretty wild. Summertime. Feeling pretty unhinged. Next episode, possibly a little Who's bit more say? pop culture news. Possibly a little bit more like getting to know us. But Who's we're to happy to share it because we want you guys to know us. We want to know you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You guys are awesome. We're excited Smash to talk with like y'all button. next week. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Comment. Tell your friends about us. Tell them. Because the world may be depressing, but we, but we are, are not. not. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>